Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're looking at some of the best budget survival knives out there that you can get for less than a hundred bucks, and in some cases, even less than 50. Let's check them out. Now, one of the nice things about the knife world that we live in today is there's a lot of great options across the board, but especially there's some good stuff under that $100 and even under that $50 mark, which is great because for something like a survival knife that you may have to really rely on in an emergency situation, might even save your life in certain cases, you want there to be as little barrier to entry as possible. So that's what we're going to focus on today so that just about anyone out there should be able to afford to pick one of these guys up. Now, you've got a few decisions you need to make when you're choosing a survival knife. And one of the first is whether you go with a larger knife or you go with a more standard size belt knife. Both are certainly valid and there's pros and cons to each. If you go with a smaller knife, it's generally going to be a little more nimble and easier to carry. So you're probably more likely to have it on you when you need it. Whereas a larger knife, it's just more power. It's more of everything. And we certainly like that as well. Now, as to the kind of blade shapes you want to look for, I tend to recommend just a simple drop point or a straight clip point blade. And the reason being, unless this is something that you're kind of stashing in an emergency kit and not using somewhere, but 99.99% of the time as you're using these knives, they aren't going to be quote unquote survival knives. These are just going to be the knives you have on you to use while you're camping, while you're hiking, that sort of thing. So you want to go with one of those two blade shapes, I think in general, because they're very versatile and you can get a lot of things done and they're going to serve you very well in all of those roles, including the survival. So today I'm going to start by showing you some of the, uh, the smaller options out there first and then working our way up to some larger ones. And the first small ones I'm going to show you uh, kind of get to one of the, uh, the next questions you have to answer. And that is, do you go with a carbon steel or do you go with a stainless steel? Now I'm kind of going to oversimplify things a little bit here just for the, uh, the sake of clarity. And this does kind of hold true actually though, within the uh, under hundred dollar mark more so than over, but there's disadvantages and advantages to, to each of these two choices. If you go with a carbon steel, it's generally going to be tougher and that strength is definitely important because you know, in a survival scenario, you may be asking your knife to do some things that you might not normally ask it to do. So no matter what you choose, toughness is going to be very important. And that carbon steel is going to give you a bit more toughness, but of course it's not stain resistant and it's also not going to hold its edge as long. But then if you go with that stainless steel, you are going to get more edge retention. Typically you're going to get that corrosion resistance, but you typically will be giving up a bit of toughness as well. So there are those trade-offs. And like I said, this is kind of an oversimplification, but you can kind of generally apply these rules to most of the stuff that is under a hundred dollars, just because of the nature of the materials that are going to be able to be used. But one of my favorite budget carbon steel survival knives out there, Coming in under $50 is the Cold Steel SRK-C, the SRK Compact, which comes in about 46 bucks. The blade here is five inches long, about an eighth of an inch thick, so it's not super overbuilt, but with the SK-5 carbon steel here, it is going to be pretty tough, and you've got a flat grind on it as well, which to me, actually, I really like. It's a good compromise between slicing capability and strength. The handles are nicely done. It's got a nice straight shape, so it's going to work with a lot of different uh, hand or finger sizes. And you've got one of the things that I find very important on a survival knife, and that is this finger guard right here. Because the last thing you want to do when you're you know, fighting exhaustion or frostbite or just an adrenaline dump, anything like that, you don't want your finger to slide forward. The last thing you need is a, a cut or an injury when you're working on actually getting out of somewhere alive. One of the notes about the handle here, it is a rubberized coating and there's pros and cons to that as well. The pros, of course, it's going to absorb some shock. If you're really kind of beating on this knife, the vibrations aren't going to be as, as hard on your hand. It's also going to give you more grip, especially in wet environments. And it's also going to shield you uh, in colder environments. If you have to take your gloves off and grasp the knife uh, without it, you're not holding any metal on skin contact there. So it's going to be quite nice. But when it comes to that extra grip that it does offer you, the flip side of that is during long working sessions, if you're really bearing down on the knife, there is more of a potential for hot spots and raising a blister. So take that into consideration when you're choosing your knife. Now the sheaths on these are quite nicely done too. It is a simple click in uh, Securex material is what they call it. So there's some nice positive retention there. You've got 
a nylon strap to carry it on your belt and an extra retention loop as well. And if you'd like, if you want a different uh, aftermarket attachment, your typical Blade Tech tech locks will work quite nicely so you can carry them horizontal, inverted, or any number of other positions. All right, next up is a more uh, expensive knife, but still very affordable, I think, especially considering it is made in the USA, the K-Bar BK-16, which runs about $90 right now. Now, Ethan Becker will tell you that this knife is probably the best knife he's ever designed, and it really does boil down everything you need in a small drop point outdoors knife that is going to work very well for survival. You've got a 1095 CV carbon steel blade, uh, just under four and a half inches, and the dimensions, I think, are a very ideal place to start for a cross-section of strength, durability, and slicing characteristics. You've got a 5 32nds of an inch thick blade with a full flat grind. It's just going to work very well. You've got that finger guard that I appreciate, and you've got a full tang construction in this case. So you've got the whole backbone of the blade going all the way through. And while a full tang construction is not 100% a, uh, a requisite for a survival knife, we do tend to think of them as being a little more durable or it gives us a little bit more of a sense of security having that full backbone. The handle scales here are simple injection molded and they're contoured very nicely. They fit into my slightly larger than average hands quite well. I know a lot of folks with smaller hands, it works well for them also. If you want a more premium feel, you could certainly upgrade these to a, uh, a Micarta scale that K-Bar does offer, but that is gonna bump things up above the $100 price point. So we're leaving it, uh, leaving it stock for the purposes of this conversation. Last feature you'll see here that we didn't see on that cold steel, we've got a protruding tang here at the back, which is something you could use for kind of some hammering tasks. You'll be able to concentrate your force onto some things, maybe crack into, uh, I don't know, some, uh, some nuts, maybe a stone, anything like that that you might need to be, uh, to be striking with, but you wanna protect your blade, you're gonna be able to use that in those kind of scenarios. Now the sheath on the BK-16, uh, kind of really shows the influence of kind of the crossover of genres that survival knives typically tend to sit at, which is somewhere in between an outdoor knife and a tactical knife. They blend them to blend those two things together very well, and you see the tactical influence on this sheath definitely. On the back, you do have a belt loop here that has a snap and some Velcro, but you've also got uh, Molly compatibility built in. You've got two retaining straps on the front, and you've got a nice pouch here on the front as well, which you can use to stash some other things, like maybe a sharpener, some fire starting gear, any of those other little survival goodies you might wanna have on you. All right, next up is another American made knife, the Buck Compadre, which comes in right at our $100 ceiling right now. And it's a really nice knife. Uh, interestingly though, the blade wouldn't necessarily be my first choice, but their material selection here kind of counteracts that a little bit. Uh, we're at about four and a half inches and we've got a hollow grind in this case, which tends to leave a thinner or less amount of metal right behind the edge. So you have a thinner cross section there. It's gonna slice a little bit better in the, uh, the front area, but you do give up a little durability in my mind. But because they used 5160 tool steel here, the toughness is very high on this knife. So that, that kind of goes hand in hand with that grind to kind of maintain a balance. Now, one thing I didn't mention on these previous two knives, but you see it here as well, is you've got a coating on this blade. So because you are dealing with that carbon steel that can rust or tarnish if not taken care of, on a quote unquote survival knife, if you're going with carbon steel, a lot of folks definitely appreciate that coating because it's gonna keep the steel protected from moisture underneath. One of the other things you'll see here is a little bit of a hint of recurve to the edge itself right at the heel. And one of the things this does is in a given blade length that does give you just a hint more sharpened edge, might be a little bit more difficult to sharpen uh, with especially with a, a flat stone, but if you're using some improvised materials, maybe even harder, maybe not, it all depends. Uh, but I wouldn't go too aggressive on a recurve if you're, uh, if you're looking at some other options than what I'm showing you here, because the, the more aggressive it is, the harder it is gonna be to sharpen. Now the handles on here are quite nice as well. We've got micarta in this case. And again, kind of a simple neutralist shape like that SRK. So it's not gonna be a very prescriptive grip. It's gonna work in a lot of different handholds. And the nice thing about micarta is when it's wet, it actually feels a little bit tackier in your hand. So you get a little bit of added peace of mind if you're sweating real bad, if you're working 
around water or if it's raining real bad, it's less likely to feel slick in your hands and like you're gonna lose it. Now the sheaf on this brings a, uh, introduces a new flavor so far on our list. Nice black leather, slightly more classic in its appeal. You do have a, uh, a webbing retention strap on it though. So it's not 100% leather, but what's nice is that's a leather sheath made in the USA as well. They didn't outsource this sheath. Now, one of the questions I, I kind of get a lot is what's the difference between survival and bushcraft knives? And in terms of kind of the skill set for both, there is a lot of overlap. But in terms of the kind of genre of knife, there, there is some differentiation there. There tends to be different styles that are prioritized, but a good crossover between a survival knife and the bushcraft knife world, I think, is the Mora Bushcraft Black, which the base models of these start at 50 bucks, uh, and there's a few more premium options with some more complex or, or nicer sheath options that are more expensive, but all of them are between 50 and 100 right now. Like the SRK, we've got an overmolded handle with a partial tang, and these have been proven to be extremely durable in countless tests and reviews out there. So I don't, uh, I don't begrudge that at all, it not having a full tang. You also have that finger guard, which I like, but the main difference you'll see between survival and bushcraft knives is in the blade grind itself. We've got a Scandi grind here, which they're really, really good at stuff like wood carving, especially because the two edges come straight down to essentially zero. There's no secondary bevel here. It kind of behaves like a chisel in certain ways. It's going to be really good for that sort of thing. Now, the problem is if you get too thick on a Scandi ground knife, it's less likely to be able to slice very well. So the thickness of this, which is about an eighth of an inch, is about as thick as I like to go on a Scandi. You still can slice well enough, certainly slice well enough for your, your survival knife, and you get the benefits of having that great wood carving capability. You'll also see on this knife a nice crisp spine, which you tend to see more on on bushcraft knives than you do survival knives. And the thing that's gonna let you do, you can strike a fire steel with it, you can scrape bark, scrape other things for tinder to, uh, to kind of work, uh, work the fluff up, that sort of thing. But it's nice to have, kind of like a protruding tang on that becker, to have one extra thing built into the knife that's gonna protect your edge. Now, as for the sheath, on the, uh, on the $50 version at least, it's very simple. It's a uh, injection molded plastic, clicks in, and you've got some simple belt attachments with it. Um, but it's lightweight as well. And that brings me to another nice point about small knives in general, but about these Moras specifically, is they're very easy to carry. They're not gonna weigh you down. Uh, this guy right here, just the knife, is just over four ounces, and it's just a little bit more with that sheath. So it's gonna be a very easy knife to carry while still, be still being very strong. Now the steel on that Mora uh, is roughly equivalent to 1095, but let's get into, into some, uh, some stainless options now. Uh, some stainless and semi-stainless options, I should say, because I want to talk about these next two knives together. Uh, we've got the Ruiki Jaeger and the QSP Bison, two similarly sized fixed blades uh, that are a little bit on the smaller side handle-wise. So for me, I, I just barely have enough there. I feel a little cramped on them, maybe. Um, it wouldn't be too bad in actual use, um, but if you have kind of average or smaller sized hands, these are both going to be really good options. Now, this Jaeger comes in about $70 right now, and for that, the materials I actually really like. Now, the blade on this guy is about 4.3 inches long, and the steel is Sandvix 14C28N. A lot of numbers and letters, but I really like this, uh, this material in this price range especially, because you get a good amount of edge retention, but in addition to that, it's a pretty darn tough stainless steel, especially in the budget range. You're going to get, uh, get some of that toughness that you want from a carbon steel. Not necessarily to the same extent, but you're going to get some of that in here as well. We've also got probably my favorite looking blade shape on this table and a nice stonewashed finish, which is going to really, it's going to be a really nice choice for a working knife because it's going to hide scratches a little bit. And of course, you're kind of micro polishing the side, so it's a little more corrosion resistant on top of the already stainless qualities. Now, one of the things to watch out for, you see it here, is a long swedge on the knife. And you got to be a little bit careful when choosing a knife like this because if they're too thin, you're going to lose some of the spine thickness, which is going to be a problem. Uh, if you need to do any kind of wood splitting with it, it's going to be harder to baton with this. Uh, and it can also make the tip a little too delicate in some cases. Not in this case, on this particular knife. This one's handled very well. You've got enough thickness left on the spine so that you've got the strength there, you've got the ability to baton with it. 
but you get the advantages of the swedge. Namely, you're gonna remove a little bit of drag there. So if you're moving through some materials, especially a kind of a, a circular cut, it's gonna be a little bit nicer. Now, in contrast to that Mora, we don't have a crisp spine here. We've actually got a crown spine. Cool thing about that is they're gonna be very comfortable for hammer grips specifically, or sorry, no, this is a, a saber grip right here when you're pushing your thumb up onto the, where the jimping is here. Nice and comfortable to use in any, any of those kind of choke up scenarios, which is not necessarily the case if you do have a crisp spine. Handles here are G10. They're contoured really nicely. Like I said, I have just enough length for my hands, but the uh, the average and smaller size hands handed folks out there, this is gonna be a really nice fit. We've also got a little bit of milling on there, not so much that it feels pinchy, but you get a little bit more surface area for a little bit more grip. Now the sheath in this case is ABS plastic, clicks into place. Uh, in terms of the actual belt attachment, in this case, you're not gonna be able to use uh, a standard tech lock. It doesn't quite fit the whole patterns here but you do get a nice kind of J-hook design here that you can actually rotate into a few different directions. You push this metal tab down and you can rotate that around. And you've got, uh, got spots on the, uh, the 45 degree as well. It's not just a 90 degree twist. So that's really nicely done. It's something a little bit different too. Now, as for the QSP Bison, it's a little more expensive, comes in about 80 bucks. You've got a denim micarta handle scale in this case, so you get the advantages of a, of a typical micarta. And the blade here, four and a half inches, very subtle clip point. And the reason I don't, I, I say stick with a straight clip point or a subtle clip point is you don't want that tip to get too narrow or too pointy, too acute, because you wanna be able to do things like drilling, maybe a little bit of prying, again, in a survival scenario, you might be needing to use your knife for something you would normally never use your knife for. And the last thing you want is a snapped tip. Now the grinds on this knife are very precise. It's a high flat grind on a 5 seconds of an inch thick blade. Very nicely done. One word of note though on this blade is you are dealing with D2 tool steel. Uh, this is kind of a semi stainless. It's not, uh, it, it can patina on you in certain scenarios. And it does have some really good edge retention, especially in this price range. But flip side of that, it can be fairly difficult to sharpen at times. And also while not the toughest steel in the world, they did give us enough thickness on this blade, on this QSP to kind of counteract that a little bit. But if toughness is kind of the, uh, the trait that you're prioritizing, I would look to one of these other knives maybe over a D2 steel. But what I can say about this QSP is the fit and finish here is absolutely phenomenal. It's probably actually looking at everything here on the table at any of these prices, the, the fit and finish, the, uh, the shine, the quality here, just it's put together nicer than anything else here. The sheath is also nicely done and full featured as well. It's got actual Kydex in this case with a wraparound loop here with a, uh, a drop loop for your belt and its own tech lock style of attachment also included. So you have two different belt attachment options included for that $80 price point, or sorry, uh, roughly, yeah, $80 price point. So you are getting a lot for your money, both in terms of materials and like I said, that fit and finish. All right, next up I think is my kind of favorite $50 stainless survival knife option, uh, even though it's a $51 survival knife at this point, uh, but that is the Steel Will Roamer. There's a whole series of these knives, but the four and a half inch clip point version, I think is a really fantastic choice for a budget survival knife. Subtle clip point, so you have a, a decent amount of tip strength here, it's not too acute. And you got four and a half inches of a 9CR 18 MOV stainless steel, which is roughly equivalent to 440C. So it's just kind of a good all around budget stainless steel. As far as the thickness, we're at 530 seconds again. Nice high flat grind, just a really good shape overall. The handle is injection molded and you've got a protruding tang. So you know this, this steel runs all the way through the handle of the knife. And that's, again, peace of mind, that's a good thing to see. We've also got three hollow tubes in the handle, which used to see more often, a little bit less so now. Uh, the stereotypical thing was always, hey, you could turn your knife into a spear. The reason I don't necessarily like that so much uh, outside of very limited use cases is you're putting one of your most valuable tools at the end of a long stick. If that breaks, if anything happens to it, you're SOL. It can be useful maybe for you know getting to something in a tree that's a little higher up that you might need to cut. 
there are, like I said, some limited use cases, but by and large, you're probably gonna be better off sharpening a stick and fire hardening it if you need sort of a, uh, a spear scenario. But on a more positive connotation here, uh, there's plenty of extra lanyard options you can use here. Certain people like, especially a center hole in the bushcraft community can be good for certain types of lanyards for helping secure your grip and that sort of thing. So that's quite nice as well. She found here. Another kind of classic look. You've got black leather with a retention loop and even a nice dangler in this case, which can be quite nice, especially if you're wearing a pack or a longer winter coat. It's gonna hold the knife a little bit lower and be easier to access without interfering with the rest of your gear. So I think this knife is actually a pretty good transition uh, as we get into kind of the middle ground between the smaller knives and the bigger knives, because even though the blade itself isn't that much bigger than the BK-16, especially in terms of sharpened edge itself, you can see it's a little bit more big, a little bit more substantial feeling, but it's got a really nice kind of rubber coated handle in this case, good finger guard. Uh, and like I said, a good transition into the medium sized fixed blades, we'll call it. Uh, and one of the newest, the newest on the table here uh, that kind of inspired this episode in a way is the new K-Bar IFB drop point fix blade, even though this is kind of a straight clip point, that's what they're calling it. Uh, and these guys are very nicely priced coming in at 38 bucks. Now the materials here aren't gonna kind of wow the knife enthusiasts out there so much, but when you consider the price, it's actually a pretty good proposition. Blade is close to five inches here. We're almost 4.8 and we've got an 8CR series stainless in this case. You do have stainless qualities here, but you also have kind of that black coating, which echoes to the, you know, the carbon steel survival knife genre. But it's another really good shape, nice and broad, high flat grind, not too thick, all around a nice thing. This is also gonna be a really good option for folks with some larger hands. We've got G10 handles here, single large finger groove here at the front, and then kind of the neutrality, or a little bit more of a neutral shape takes over towards the back. And there is a lot of space on this guy. Even myself wearing a pair of work gloves, I've still got plenty of room to hold on to. You'll also see a protruding tang there at the back and a little bit more of a, an acute point than some of the others. So maybe even better for certain tasks in terms of concentrating your force on some other things. Sheath on this guy is hard plastic with positive retention and it's got two removable belt loops on the back. Pretty broad, so you're gonna be able to fit a lot of different belts on there, but it's not the, the tallest out there. If you happen to wear like a, a really big, thick, heavy leather belt, you might have a little bit of a height issue there, but the whole pattern here will fit a standard tech lock. All right, the last knife and kind of the in-between large and small sized knives is the original SRK from Cold Steel, the, uh, the bigger brother survival rescue knife to the SRKC we looked at earlier. And still price on this, just a little bit over 40 bucks, but we've got six inches of SK5 carbon steel in this case. It's a little bit thicker. It's actually about 3 16 of an inch thick. And to kind of counteract the thickness a little bit, instead of the flat grind, they have a hollow grind on this particular one, which I kind of talked about what that does uh, a little bit earlier. But again, you do at least have a nice tough carbon steel here like SK5. And the reason I don't call this necessarily a big knife, even though it is a full six inch blade, is it's not a, uh, it's not a pocket anchor or a, a belt anchor, I should say. It's pretty well balanced. You're gonna be able to, to handle this a little more agilely than you might some of these larger knives. Still a great option. Sheath is about the same, uh, just about exactly the same as that S original SRKC, just a little bit bigger for this particular knife. All right, now we're gonna get into officially the big knives with one of the kind of more popular budget survival knife, big survival knife options out there. And that's Schrade's Frontier series. This is the SH, SCHF 52M coming in just under 50 bucks. So there's a lot of knife here for your money. Now the blade here is 1095 carbon steel. It's got about a full seven inches going on and it's pretty thick in this case. It's not quite a full quarter inch, but we're about 0 0.21, 0 0.22 in the thickness here. So a lot of uh, a lot of backbone for this knife. It does have a hollow grind. So again, kind of the same caveat supply. You're a little bit uh, less strong right behind the edge, but it does kind of give you that balance to give you a little bit of slicing capability, even though you have a very thick spine. The handles here are micarta. There's a nice bit of texture on there. Again, similar to that Ruiki earlier, 
Not so much that it's gonna be pinchy, but you are gonna get even more surface area for more traction. Now, one of the advantages of a larger knife like this is you tend to get more, or you have the possibility at least, of getting more handholds versus a smaller knife. In this case, there's two big ones. One, you have the ability to choke up, especially when they give you this nice, broad, full-sized finger choil in front of the, uh, the first initial finger guard. And that allows you to choke up, balance the knife out a little bit better, and do the finer carving tasks a little bit more easily. And I really like the way they do their choils on this, uh, on this particular series, in that a lot of companies will take the sharpened edge all the way back into the actual choil section as well. But they didn't do that here. They gave you a little bit of unsharpened uh, blade material there right at the front. So you essentially have another fully functional finger guard built into that, less likely to, uh, to kind of bite yourself and, uh, and draw a little bit of blood. You don't want that for sure. The other major handhold you'll get with this knife, thanks to this, uh, this curl down and flare at the back, is the ability to choke back and take advantage of the extra length you have here to do some light chopping with it. Now again, you're dealing with a hollow grind, so it's not gonna be as robust as a flat or a convex grind, but you're able to get that little bit extra out of this knife that you just don't have those options for in a smaller knife. Now the sheath on this, like the knife, is uh, kind of influenced by some of those Becker designs out there in that you see the tactical influence, you see the ability to, uh, to take it on and off your belt with the flap here, retention loop, hard insert inside of it, and the pocket on the front. But in this case, you actually get some extra goodies. Instead of having to supply it yourself, they include for you both a fire striker, or a fire steel and a striker, and a nice diamond sharpening stone as well, so you can keep your knife in tip-top shape. But speaking of kind of some of the influence on that charade, we gotta go back to kind of the poster boy for the overbuilt sharpened pry bar style of survival knife, and that is the Becker BK2 made in America for just under a hundred bucks right now. Now, when I say things like sharpened pry bar, I don't mean that in any kind of disparaging way. I just mean that this is a knife where slicing efficiency is not at the top of its list of priorities. They, they try to make it, uh, make it usable. You've got a full quarter inch of steel here and a uh, kind of mid to slightly higher than mid height flat grind. So you can still cut and slice with it, but the top priority here is just indestructibility. You've got that tough 1095 carbon steel, crazy thick in this case. You wanna be able to not destroy this knife. Any kind of choppy stuff with it, prying, batoning, driving it into something to use it as a ledge or a step even, you can do a lot to this knife without really having to worry too much about whether you're hurting it or not. It's just gonna laugh and be ready for more. Handles here, again, injection molded, but Micarta scales are available separately and a really nice feel again. Feels very nice to my hands and you got a nice robust protruding pommel at the back too. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about with any of these options is kind of the stereotypical hollow handled survival knife. You guys know the ones I'm talking about where you unscrew the cap on the back and you're able to fit some things inside. You can kind of do that a little bit with this knife. You don't have the cap, but these bolt-on scales do have some space on the inside where some folks out there have been known to stash some things in there, whether it's small fire starters, some fishing gear, like little tiny survival fishing kits, that sort of thing, certainly is an option. Word of caution, however, I will say it's not something I typically uh, look upon with that much favor because having everything in the knife itself, having everything in one centralized location means if you lose that one thing, you've lost way more than just that one thing. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about doing stuff like that. Now there's actually uh, two different versions of the BK2 out there right now where the knife is, itself is actually the same, but it comes with a different sheath. Uh, the standard BK2 comes with a nice hard injection molded plastic, clicks in quite nicely, you got your tech lock compatibility and you got your standard belt loop here with retention strap. If that's not your thing, if that's not your style, uh, there is a more typical nylon style sheath like some of the ones we've looked at here with the pocket on the front. Either one is gonna be a good option, but it's good to have those options. All right, last but not least, we're gonna come to Ontario's Rat series of knives. And I've got two here from it, the Rat 5 and the Rat 7. Now the Rat 5 comes in about 75 bucks right now. It's made in the USA, 3 16 of an inch thick, 1095. So it's kind of the, the similar story, similar bullet points uh, to what we've been seeing so far on some of these, uh, these tougher carbon steel knives. It's just 
It's one of those things that just plain works. Now this is a good option as sort of an alternative to the BK2. If you like something about this size, but you don't want the, uh, the overbuilt thickness of that BK2, this, uh, this Rat 5 is quite nice. It's a little bit thinner. Slicing geometry is definitely a lot, a lot better since you have that full flat grind going on. And you don't get kind of a contoured handle in this case, but you do get micarta. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a plus and minus there. But you get that nice material. You can certainly mod it a little bit if you want. And you've got that protruding pommel there at the back and that nice finger guard at the front. This is what I was talking about when I was talking about choils earlier with that shade where the edge comes all the way kind of into the, uh, the front leading edge of the choil itself. So you can still choke up, balance things out a little bit. Just keep in mind, you do have that edge there. Now, sheaths on these guys are quite nicely done, uh, especially for kind of a, a simpler style of sheath. You've got the retention strap here around the handle. You've also got another retention strap to go over the finger guard. And the thing that's nice about the way they've done this, it's a completely ambidextrous sheath because this strap moves. So you can carry it on either side of your body, no problem. And finally, the Rat 7 coming in about 87 bucks right now, US made 1095 with a seven inch blade in this case. A little bit different than that Schrade we looked at earlier. Again, the Schrade there is kind of going for the more overbuilt nature. The Ontario is still very, very, very rugged, but you've got some better slicing geometry in this case, thanks to the 3 16th steel and that full flat grind. Now the handle on this knife is actually identical to that Rat 5, or at least the handle scales are. Plenty of length there. There's enough, uh, enough of a curve down at the back in space where you can choke back a little bit, get some of those uh, you know, lighter chopping tasks done. And you still have that protruding pommel, but it's a little bit gentler here. You don't have the, uh, the more acute point, although it's not sharp, but this is gonna be a little bit more comfortable for any of those drilling tasks like I mentioned earlier. All right, that's all I've got time for today, that is, a really great selection, I think, of some survival knives under 100 bucks and under 50 bucks so that everyone out there can, can get in on the fun. Let me know what you thought and let me know your favorite survival knives down in the comments. And to get your hands on any of these, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there so that you can earn some free money to spend on a future purchase. There's a link up there in the corner uh, where you can get to the full details. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.